Hello everybody, welcome to Scalable Scripts. In this video, you will learn how to create authentication using React. The backend for this video is done on Laravel and you can find the video on our channel. Let's start with it and first we have to install React. To install React, we need first to install Node.js. To install Node.js, we just need to download and run the installer. And that's it, we are done. I already installed Node.js in my computer, so I am ready to install my React app. Open the terminal and write ngx create react app and I will call it react auth. You can name your project however you want. Let's wait till the installation is done. After the installation is done, we can go to the folder now and run npm start. This will run React server on the port 3000. Now that the server is up and running, let's open the browser and check our React app. Let's continue by adding the changes in our app. Now that our React app is done, we can go and check the files. So we can remove this part now, because we don't need it and we will also remove the logo. The first thing we do to style our app is installing Bootstrap. Let's install it now. Type in the terminal npm install bootstrap. Let's wait till it's done. Now that Bootstrap is installed, we need to import it in our app. This is the code for the import of the Bootstrap CSS files. Now that we added the Bootstrap CSS, it won't show the styles immediately, unless we add some HTML. I will paste now some HTML for a simple navigation, with a home on the left side and login and sign up on the right side. We can see now that the header looks fine and Bootstrap is working fine. Now let's add some more styles. Open index.css and paste this CSS. I will scroll down slowly so you guys can copy it. If we open our browser now, we can see that our styles look good. Now that we added our navigation, let's go down and add some more styles. Type div class name auth wrapper and inside we will add a div with a class name of auth inner. Here I will just display a simple h2 with a text you are not logged in. If you open the browser you can see not that good that it works. Seems like some style is wrong. Ok, we need to put a capital N here and everything looks fine. Now we won't add all the HTML in app.js. We want this to be another component. So let's create a new folder called components and inside it create a file called home component. Now write export default class home extends component. This is a default React component class. We need also to import React and component from React. And add render method that will return the h2 tag you are not logged in. Thank you. 
and here we will just use home. Open the browser and you will see the same thing. Let's also create a component for the navigation. Export default nav extends component. I forgot class here. Don't forget to import React and component from React in here too. Add the render method and return this HTML that we added here. And go to app and add navigation here. Also add import nav from nav.component. We can see that everything works fine. Now that we added the home component, we want to go to login or sign up component when we click the link. But right now it's not doing anything. In order to go to login component, we need to add routers. Let's do it now. First, install React Router DOM by typing npm install React Router DOM. Let's wait till it's done. Now that it is completed, let's add in our main app browser router. We need to import browser router from React Router DOM. Now we need to make a switch statement here to change the component when we are in a different route. Write switch and also we need to import switch from React Router DOM and we add a new route. The syntax is route path and it should be the main page and component which is, in this case, is the home one. Remove the home component here, import the route, and we can see that the page works correctly. Now we need to add the other routes, the login route, Let's import it. Let's copy nav here and change it to login component and do the same thing for register too. Now, if you go to login route, you can see that it's not working and the reason is that we didn't specify the exact route. These routes should match exactly to the routes. Open the browser and you can see that now it works. We are at the login page. Now, if you go to register, This is the register page. Now we want when you click login or sign up to get redirected to that page. Let's do it. Let's go to nav. And here we need to change it to link. Let's import it and it will redirect to the home page.
Let's do the same for the login link. And for register. Now, if we open the page, click login and we get redirected to login page. Click sign up and we redirect to register page. Click home and we go to the home page. Now we have to create the register and login pages. Let's remove this H2 and convert it to a form. It will have a heading of 3 and then we need to add the inputs. Add a div class name form group. This is the bootstrap syntax to create forms. Add label first name and then the input type text. Class name form control, placeholder first name. Let's do the same for last name and email. The type has to be email in here because it will validate the email. Add the same for password with the type of password and confirm password because we want to confirm the password. Let's see how it looks like. It looks fine, so we just need to also add another button. Type button, class name BTN, BTN primary and BTN block. So the button is added. Now let's send a request to the server and create the first user. To do that we need to install Axios. Let's do it now. Axios is the package that allows us to send GET and POST requests. Now that Axios is installed, let's add a function to handle a submit request. Go here and add on submit this handle submit. Let's create this function. For now, just console log works. Go to the page and open Inspect. Try to click Sign Up and we can see that it works, but we also see that the page refreshes, which is not fine. To do that, we need to add an event in here, and this event should prevent the default behavior, in this case, to refresh the page. So now when I click sign up, it will just console log works without refreshing the page. Now we need to get the data from all the inputs. To do that, we have to create a variable for each input. There is an easy way where we can add all the variables here, but I prefer this way. I will add on change here and e for event this dot first name equals to e dot target dot value. So this automatically creates the first name variable.
Let's do the same for all the other fields. Now here at console log we'll create a data variable which is equal to first name this dot first name, last name this dot last name, email this dot email, password this dot password and confirm password this dot confirm password. At the end, we will console log the data. Clear the console and put some random values. And we will see that we are console logging the values. Now we need to use Axios to send the post request to the server. Axios.post and the link is HTTP localhost 8000 slash register and we need to send the data and then this is when the response happens. But for now I will just console log the response. If an error happens I will use catch and let's console log the error. We also have to import Axios here. Let's try it out. We got an error, so let's check what it is. This data here has to be password confirmed instead of confirm password. Let's change it and try it again. So we register successfully and we get the user with the ID of 1. We now have to log in with our user. To do so, we first have to create the form. Go to register component and copy this form for shortcut. And paste it here. We do not need first name and last name. We change the text here to login. Remove the confirm password. So we just need the email and password. The text here should be login. We also need a function that happens and also the submit. It needs to prevent the default so it doesn't refresh the page. So everything should be good right now. Let's check the page. So yeah, everything looks fine. Now let's try sending the data to the API. Create a data variable which is equal to email, this email, and password, this password. We need Axios now. Axios.post and add the URL for the backend. localhost 8000 slash login and data. Then the result we need to console log it.
and we need to catch the errors. Of course, we need to import Axios at the end. That's it, let's try it now. Let's inspect it and try to send the data that we sent when we got registered. So we successfully got logged in. We can see that we have the access token now. When we go to home page, the message is still you are not logged in. We have to change this message now to you are logged in and also to reveal our name. The first thing we need to do is to store the token to our local storage. Let's do it now. Local storage set item token equals to res the token. And let's go to home component and we need to use that token now in order to get the current user. First, let's add the component did mount method so it runs before the render method runs. And we need to call axios.get. And here we may copy the link again, localhost 8000 slash login. But there is a better way to do it since we know that all the APIs start with localhost 8000. Let's go first to index.js and here run this axios.defaults. Let's import it so we can have the intellisense dot default dot base URL equals to cut it from login and paste it here localhost 8000. Go to register component and remove this link here. Go to Home Component 2 and comment this for the moment. So everything works fine. Now here we just need to add user because the suffix is added automatically. Then console log result and error. Don't forget to import Axios here. So we're still not logged in. Let's see what the error is telling. So unauthenticated. The reason is that we need to provide the headers for this method in order to be authenticated. So to add the headers, we need to create a const variable called config equals to headers. And the one header that we need is authorization bearer. And we will concatenate local storage.getItem token. And we will use this config here. Still not logged in, so let's see the headers. So the token is undefined. I think the problem relays when we log in.
So the token should be like this. Let's log in again. And go to home page. So we are getting the current user. Let's change the message. Go to home component and now we need to change the message. To do that we need to use state. And here we need to specify this set state user res.data. So we will get our data, meaning the current user, and send it to user state. Here we will add an if condition. If this user state is set, then return h2, hi, this user dot first name and this user dot last name. So we got an error and the error is that we have to put state here. Now we got the user and displayed the name here. So the login works correctly. There is one thing left to do, probably we'll have more than one API to call and the one with config is not a good practice to use. Let's change it now. Remove config here and cut this code here and go to index.js and do the same thing for headers as base URL. Type Axios, default headers, common and the authorization header is equal to bearer and local storage get item token. This will create a common header for all API calls. Open the page and it works the same. Now that we are logged in, we need to display a logout button here in the header and not the login button again. To do that, we need to change the code in our navigation component. The problem we have currently is that we need the same code as this one here to get the current user. We can add the same code again there, but it's not a good practice and we will have to call the same thing twice in the same component. Both of the components have the same parent, which is app.js. We can have here the code that we get the current user and pass the user variable to the child component. Let's see how to do it. First, let's change the function here to export the default class app extends component. We need to import component here, and this is the render function. Now go to home component and cut this code. And paste it here. Better do it like this. We also need the state here. Paste it here and that's it. Now we have to pass user data in the home component. To do that, we have to do it like this. Home and user is equal to this.state.user.
go to home component now. Now is not called a state, but the parameters passed from the parent component are props. Let's add the props again here and let's see our page. We also have to remove this code here, also import Axios. Open the browser now. We get an error and the reason is that we assigned the components wrongly. Here is the problem and it has to be like this. It has to be a function that it returns the component. And now it's working correctly. So we can see that we are passing user parameter inside the home component and we are displaying the user data. We can remove this line now. Now let's add the logout button in the nav component. We will still pass the parameter here, user equal to this state user and depending on the user we will change the HTML. This is the part we want to change. Let's cut this part and let's make an if condition. If this props user, so if the user is set, we will display the logout button, otherwise we will display this HTML. So I will create a variable here, let buttons and buttons will be equal to this HTML here. And we will display buttons here. In case this user is logged in, we need to change the HTML to be like this. This link now will redirect to the main page and we need to add the onClick functionality. I will keep it short and simple just to clear the local storage. And this should have a logout name. We can see the logout button and if we click it now, it won't show anything. But if we refresh the page, it says that we are not logged in right now. In the next tutorial, we will see how to make a smooth experience using login and logout buttons. When we try to log in with our correct credentials, we can see that login is successful, but nothing happens in the page because we didn't write any redirection. Let's do it now. Go to login component and create a state variable. This is the state that will trigger when we log in. Here we need to set state that logged in is true. Here in the render function we will catch this state. If this state logged in, then return redirect. This is a page that we need to redirect and it is a home page. Import the redirect from Reactor Outer DOM. This is it basically. This is how you get redirected in React. Let's try it now. Let's add the credentials. And we can see that we moved to our main page. But we still see a problem here. We have a message you are not logged in. This shouldn't be the right message. And also the component here should update. If we refresh the page, we can see that everything is correct. How do we solve this problem? When we log in, we only change the state of login component, but we are not changing the state of home component or nav component. The only way to do it is to change the state via app to JS, which is the parent for all these components. Let's do it now. First, I will create a function in app.js called setUser. 
which is basically this function here. Copy this function and paste it here. Change res.data into user. Here we change this to this.setUserRes.data. Basically here I didn't do anything, I refactored the function. The real usage will come here, where I will pass the same function to the login component as a parameter. Let's do it now. We will do the same as home component. We will set the parameter setUser equal to this setUser. Now let's go to login component. In the login method we know for sure that this result set will return the user. So in order to emit our user in app.js parent, we need to call this props set user res.data.user. That's it, we are passing our current logged in user to our parent app.js. Here that updates the state to our child component also. Let's check it if it works. We can see that we logged in automatically, the name here is changed, which means that it works fine. We also need to make another change. When we click logout, this change doesn't appear. Let's do the same change on the logout function. Go to navcomponent.js and let's extract this function. I will call it handle logout. Let's cut this. We will clear the local storage, but also we'll call a props and set user, which will be null in this case. We also need to go to app.js and do the same thing for set user, this set user. and let's try it out and it says you are not logged in. Let's log in again. So everything works as expected. And now it's time to create the forgot password functionality. Let's start with it. Let's do it now. First, let's create the forgot component, write forgot.component.js. Write import react component from react. Create a class, export class forgot extends component. Let's copy the login form because they're similar. And paste it here. We do not need these lines of code. We only need the email. We don't need the password. The title should be forgot password. And here I will just change it to submit. We also have to create the handle submit function, where for now I will just prevent the default. The forgot component now is created and now we need to use it to main app.js and to edit as a route. Write route exact path equals the path will be forgot and the component will be forgot. Let's go and check it in the browser. We can see that the page is looking good 
and we have to add a forgot password link here to redirect us to the forgot page. Let's do it now. Go to login component and here add a P with class name equal forgot password and text right. Inside it, we will have a link that redirects to forget with the name forgot password question mark. We can see now that we have a link here that when we click on it, we are redirected to forgot password page. Now let's implement the functionality when we insert an email here. Before we do that, we need to run MailCatcher in order to catch the emails, because this call will send an email. Let's go to the terminal and run MailCatcher. To use the web interface, we need to use this link. Let's open it on the browser. And now we have MailCatcher running. Now we just need to send an email to the server and we will get an email. Now that we are at forgot component, we need to implement just this handle submit function. Luckily, we have the email here, so we have all the necessary data. Write const data equals to email this email. This is all we need. Now we have to import Axios. And call Axios post the endpoint is forgot and the data is this data variable we just created and we need to console log the result. Also, when an error happens, we have to catch it and console log that too. Let's open the browser and insert an email. a at a.com You can see that the page was refreshed. And we didn't get an email. It seems we have an error in our code. The error is that I have mistyped the name of the function here. Now let's try it again. a at a.com and type submit. The page didn't refresh and we got an email. Change your password here. If we click the link, we will get redirected to localhost 3000 reset and the code. We haven't implemented this component yet, so let's do it now. Let's create the reset component. Create a new JavaScript file, resetcomponent.js. Now write import react component from react. Now let's create a class, export class reset extends component. For the render function, it is the same code as in the login component, so just copy-paste it. We do not need these lines of code, and also we do not need the email. Here change login to reset password. We also need to remove this line here. Change the text here to submit.
Let's copy the password, input code and paste it again here. This is the field for password confirm. Now let's implement this handle submit function. Again, we will just prevent the default here. Now we need to add this component to app.js to our routes. Let's go to app.js. Let's duplicate this route and change forgot to reset. And this path now will be slash reset slash id. This id will be a random string, which is a token for our request. Let's see it on our browser and everything looks fine. Resend and this is the id. Now we need to get this ID, also with a password and password confirm. I forgot to change the name in reset component. Rename it here to password confirm. Change also the label name to password confirm. So we just need to insert password and password confirm and also this token here and our password will be reset. Let's do it now. Let's start by importing Axios. And first let's gather all the data that we need. First we need the token that we can get it from our parameters. The way we can retrieve it is by using this props match params dot id. So this will go to the properties and we'll get what's inside this URL with this ID here. Now we need the password, which is this password and password confirm, which is this password confirm. Now that we got all the data, let's call Axios and post to the reset URL with this data. When it's successful, we will console log the result, and when it's an error, we will also console log it for now. There is also one thing to be done. When we successfully reset the password, we need to redirect to our login page. So let's create a state variable here. Let's call this set state and reset is equal to true. So we'll tell React that reset password was successful. In the render method, we will ask the question if this state dot reset is set. If it's set, then we will return redirect to login. Import this redirect. So let's try it now. We'll change the password. I will type 1234 and to the confirm one 1234 and submit it. We can see that successfully we got redirected to our login page. It means that apparently it works. But we also have to try to log in with a new password. As we can see, the password is changed successfully. The reset password method works. Now that everything works fine, we still haven't handled all the error cases. For example, if we enter here a wrong email with a wrong password, nothing happens. We have no way to know that these are the wrong credentials. Let's fix this problem by showing the error messages. Let's go to the login component and for now we just console log the error. But we want to get the error. To do that, we need to store the error message to our state. Let's do that now. This dot set state.
I will create a property called message and the message will be error.response.data.message. Now we are storing the error message in the state and we need to display it. I will display the error message right here before the login header. To do that we need to create a variable called error which is an empty string and if this state dot message dot is set So this will trigger when we have an error. We need to set the error. Here I will write just a simple bootstrap error dialog. Div class name alert, alert danger, role alert. And I will show the message. Here I will just show the error. In case there is no error, it will show an empty string, so it won't show it. Let's open the page, now everything looks fine. Let's type a wrong email and you will see a message wrong email password, so we handled that error. Let's do the same for the sign up. Let's go to the sign up page, register and do the same thing. Let's go back, let's copy this state here and paste it here. And we need to initialize the state. Let's do the same for the error message. We need to store it here and to display it here. So let's try it now. Let's create something that this email exists and the password doesn't match. So we get a message the given data was invalid. So this is kind of the message that we are expecting. Now let's do the same for the forgot password. Let's go to the forgot component. And again let's copy this code. and paste it here. Display the error here and we need the state here. Do not forget to set the state as an empty object. The problem with the forgot component is when we enter an email that doesn't exist, it shows the error which is fine, but when we enter an email that exists, it doesn't show anything. It should show that we have sent an email, so a success message. So let's do it now and display the success message. The problem here is that we want to show the same message, but with a different class name since that one is to handle errors and another one for successful ones. To distinguish them we need to add another parameter, which is a class named danger. There are a lot of ways to solve this problem, but this is the way I solved it with my approach. Here we need to change res.data.message and the message should be success. Let's change this variable to message and we also need to change the class name. In this case is this dot state dot CLS. So in case there is an error, it will display the danger alert class. If it is successful, it will show alert success class. Let's try it now. Let's try an email that doesn't exist. 
and we get the correct message. Let's write an email that exists and we get a successful message box, check your email. You can see that it works fine. Now let's add a final change to our reset component and it will be the same as the other messages. Let's also copy the error code and let's show the error on top of the header. Here I opened a link for the reset password and let's try a password that doesn't match. And we will get a message the data was invalid. So everything works fine.